Optera, the flower of life. Mm, interesting, but no. E-space. Been there, done that. Pharisee, the great intelligence. The Mandragora Helix. Yeah, well, meeting it once was quite enough. What else? The origin of the universe. No, I already know that one. The Assyrians. The fate of the Osirians. Of course. Now there is a mystery. Not even those back on Gallifrey know the real truth behind their disappearance. And with Sutek already dealt with, I see no reason not to take a peek. I did intend on returning to Mars sometime soon. But since there is no way of traveling directly to their time period on Mars, it should be possible to search the pyramids for whatever clues they left behind. All right. Archaeology it is, then. Optera, the flower of life. Mm, interesting, but no. E-space. Been there, done that. Pharisee, the great intelligence. The Mandragora Helix. Yeah, well, meeting it once was quite enough. What else? The origin of the universe. No, I already know that one. The Osirians. The fate of the Osirians. Of course. A deserted hallway. At least it was an accurate landing. Definitely the interior of a pyramid. Good. Come into my parlor, said the spider to the fly. Now, left or right? Right it is. What is this? Equipment? Human? Ah, oh, of course, the Mars Expeditions. I must be off by a hundred years or so. This is getting absolutely ridiculous. The TARDIS is way overdue for a telemetry overhaul. I came too late to have the pyramids all to myself. All right, this is easily fixed. I just returned to the TARDIS and materialized a few decades earlier. A simple time jump with no spatial movement. Easy enough. Who in the hell are you? I am the Doctor. The new. You shouldn't be here. You're not part of this expedition. What did you do with Professor Hindley? I assure you I've done nothing to anyone. I've only just arrived. Flee, yell, or talk. Your choice. There's an intruder here. I repeat, there's an intruder here. What's going on in here? He's a stranger, Professor Wainwright. He's not part of the expedition. Professor, what is all this commotion? Patrick, is he one of the replacement techs? No, I'm familiar with them. And anyhow, look at how he's dressed. Who are you? As I've said to the young lady, I am the doctor. A doctor of what, exactly? A number of different things, actually. Would Xenoarchaeology be one of those things, doctor? I wouldn't deny a passing interest in it, no. You're from a rival expedition? Where's your crew set up? There is no one else. Just me. I'm Commander Cohen. Who are you? I am just a visitor. Hands where I can see them. Of course. Professor, would a rival team be prepared to abduct people and sabotage equipment? The illegal trade in antiques on Earth is a lucrative and ruthless business, and the supply has to come from inside the archaeological community. So yes, there could be such a team operating. And for this team to be here without the WCA's knowledge or approval? Commander Cohen, the WCA does not control all of Earth. Other governments also have an interest in Mars and may send their own teams without notifying the WCA authorities. Still, a one-man archaeological team to Mars seems a little unbelievable even to me. But a one-man saboteur, I can fully understand. I'm not a saboteur, Commander Cohen. 
We'll just see what the databanks have to say about that. Now, let's go. Now give me your arm. Here, have at it. Miller, place the sample on the scanner. Yes, sir. No match. So, you're not a CWA citizen? No, I am not. You're not a known terrorist or anarchist? Ah, uh, no. Just doing a little sightseeing. Well, if you're as good as I think you are, Doctor, you wouldn't be known. But you're in the database now. Ah, oh, how lovely. I do tend to get into a few databases once in a while. It's an occupational hazard, you see. So, are you planning to charge me with something, some type of expeditionary law? Perhaps some sort of military order or something or other? Not at the moment, but we can hold you for three days. Ah, I knew it. Never fails. Man's first instinct is always suspicion. Don't you agree, Commander Cohen? But I do really wish you would let me be on my way. Why, Doctor? Is there somewhere pressing you needed to be? No, but I was hoping to spend some time viewing the pyramids, not the inside of a cell. So the walls making up the stockade belong to the pyramid, so you can study those if you like. Well, that's not exactly what I had in mind. Just as I'm sure Professor Henley didn't have it in mind to be abducted. Will he survive your absence for three days, Doctor? That's providing he's still alive? Or are you an assassin as well as a saboteur? Look, I'm not a saboteur or an assassin. I haven't seen or met Professor Hindley. And why do you think Professor Hindley was abducted? Because he's missing. That's why. Perhaps it was an accident. Enough with your questions. This is none of your concern. Unless it was you who committed the crime, of course. Which I will find out eventually. Please, humor me. Just in the off chance that I was not the saboteur or the kidnapper. I may be able to help you, you know. I am very good at this sort of thing. All right. Fair enough. We'd have found some evidence. There's no shafts, holes, or broken bits of material in the region he was working. He's just gone. Maybe he just wandered off and got lost. These pyramids can be a bit tricky. He'd be unlikely to leave without his communicator, water bottle, and tools. No, his disappearance is suspicious. And coupled with the sabotaged equipment, it looks like he was kidnapped. Were there any signs of a struggle? The table he put his tools on had been overturned, and the tools were scattered all over the floor. You mentioned the equipment. How was it sabotaged? You tell me. Please, Commander. You're about to lock me up for three days to stare at the walls. At least give me something to think about. The mechanisms were fused. It could have been done on Earth when the equipment was packed, or during the flight here. The ship was locked down prior to takeoff, and the crew rechecked the equipment. It was fine. And most of that equipment was used here and has since been sabotaged. Possibly one of the crew, then. All the evidence pointed that way. Until you arrived, of course. And it's why the military was called in. But I doubt that person was working alone. I always suspected there'd be others involved. Like you, for instance. Was there any opposition to the expedition back on Earth? Now you're really carrying this play acting a little too far, Doctor. Everyone on Earth knows there was opposition to the expedition. It saturated the media for over a year. The professor thought he was clear of it all, thought he'd be able to pursue his science in peace, but he was wrong. I think I've given you enough to occupy your time, Doctor, don't you think? Fair enough. Thank you, Commander. I truly appreciate it. Come quick! It's Stanton! I think she's dead! You think she's dead? Where is she? The communications room. She was lying on the floor, there was blood and her eyes were open, she wasn't blinking. Miller, Beebster, with me. Hadaway, get the medic to the communications room right away. On my way, sir. You've checked for a pulse, right? Uh, I didn't I didn't go in. I saw it through the door. I came running here instead. Idiot! You could have called for help and stayed with her! She might still be alive. I didn't think of that. I'm sorry. I just didn't know what to do. Doctor, you're coming with us. I want you where I can see you. Now, let's go. She's dead. Bullet wound to the chest. May I have a look? Sure. Humor me. Hmm. There is an exit wound, and she was shot over by that door. How do you know that? Her body is at least 15 feet away. 
let's see. She was running when shot. The monitor by the door is facing at a strange angle and has multiple cracks on the screen. It was hit by something. See the bruise on her forehead. She must have been facing this way. Hit the screen while propelled by the impact of the bullet. The injury wound is in the back, so the bullet exited at chest level. Ah, there. The cover of the door panel. It's shattered and scorched. Miller, take a look. What are you doing now? I'm counting. You did this, you murderer. You killed Hindley. Now her. Who's next on your hit list? Commander, don't you see? He turns up and now Stanton's dead. He probably did it just before he found him in the outer chamber. Hadaway, bring me a recording device. Capture everything for evidence. Now, get moving. You two, take the doctor outside and make sure he doesn't go anywhere. Everyone else stay put until Hadaway gets back here and records the scene. Patrick, where are you going? Stay inside the room. I want it sealed. Inside? Why? There's a body here. It can't hurt you. And there are at least half a dozen people in here to keep you company. Sergeant Miller, take the doctor to the medical ward and lock him in an isolation cell. Make up your own password and tell no one what it is. Done. All right, you. Let's go. Wait. Look. Now what? Don't you see? They can't open the door. The panel inside was destroyed by the bullet that shot Stanton. Thus, it can only be opened from the outside. And? You'll notice it's a self-closing door, Commander. And it would be impossible to hit the interior panel with a bullet fired from an open doorway. The bullet was fired from the back of the room. And remember, 13 people, including Patrick, entered this room when we arrived. I see. Thanks again. I'll be in touch. I expect you will. Doctor? Ah, so good to see you, Commander. You look a little bored. It has been three hours. Sorry, it took time. However, I did manage to come up with one person that no one remembered seeing upon entering the communications room. Look at this picture. Which one is the killer, Doctor? Uh, let's see. Second from the left, with the dark hair and mustache. Christoph Teff. It looks like one of your men. Yes, Doctor. One of my men. It seems you've been played for a fool, Commander. So it would appear. Well, I hope you had a nice rest, Doctor, because I'm afraid I need your cell. I'll have to put Tef somewhere secure where the others won't tear him apart. Sergeant, release the Doctor. Yes, sir. You're accusing me of murder? The bullet that killed Stanton also disabled the door mechanism. There was no way for the killer to leave the room before the rest of us arrived, and no one recalls seeing you enter the room, Taff. It was a chaotic moment, Commander. There were a lot of people there, and my entry could have easily been missed. And what of him? He's certainly one to blame. The doctor was one of the last to be escorted into the room. That time. But perhaps he entered earlier and killed Sergeant Stanton. Then how did he get out of the room? I don't know. He may have found a way. Commander, perhaps I should give it a go. Please, have at it. Makes me sick just looking at him. Christoph, that is your first name, isn't it? It is an interesting name. What of it? It means, of Christ. Did the name mean something to your parents, perhaps? My parents didn't name me. In any way, I insist on being called Tef. You don't like Christoph? Not particularly, no. Someone liked it enough to call you by that name. Who was it? I don't see how any of this is your concern. Answer him, or I'll kill you right here, right now. You understand me? Patience, Commander. Patience. Now, why didn't your parents name you, Tef? I don't know. I never met them to ask. You were raised in an orphanage. So? Did it belong to a religious order? None of your business. Answer the question. It's no surprise. Over 99% of the orphanages were run by religious orders, so yes, it belonged to a religious order. Commander, please, there is no need. 
Now, Tef, who do you think built the pyramids on Mars? Humans. You don't believe in aliens? No. And why not? I just don't believe it. That's all. Oh, come on. You can tell me. What is the reason? No reason. The intelligence of man is sacred, gifted by God. Am I right? You understand. Certainly enough to know what this expedition threatens. And God created man. There are no others. We are his only children. This could not be allowed to proceed. Just the conjecture is damaging. So you sabotaged the equipment as well? It was my duty. My calling. Your calling? And the girl. Was that necessary? Was that your calling, you ignorant ape? It was not meant to happen. She just came into the room at the wrong time. I couldn't afford to be exposed. I, there was too much at stake. I did what I thought was necessary. So you shot her in the back? Yes. And Professor Henley? I had nothing to do with that. I thought it was an act of God, signifying the justness of my cause. I may face execution on our return to Earth, but the sacredness of our divine intelligence is intact. If you had no part in Henley's disappearance, then the professor may still be alive. But we found nothing. Tell me, what was the professor working on before he disappeared? He was in the treasure room. He was very excited about something called the Atef crown. Osiris's crown? Here? I'm not an archaeologist, doctor. I may have the wrong name. It, it's some kind of crown. Wait a minute. What's going on here? Who are you? You don't realize it yet, Tef, but I am your worst nightmare. Commander, how do I get to the treasure room? I'll have Hadaway take you. Sergeant, lock Tef up in the bubble, and if he gives you any trouble, shoot him. My pleasure, sir. It's this way, by that arch. Debris. Why is it here? The scientists haven't been able to identify what that is, or what the structure is made of. It's pulsar crystal, virtually indestructible. This was part of Horus's eye. So, you're a xenoarchaeologist, Doctor. I have some interest in the field, yes. The treasure room is just through here. What is he doing here? I take it the military are letting their prisoners wander around now. Tef admitted to the sabotage and the murder of Sergeant Stanton. But the sabotage was occurring before Christoph arrived. We searched and only found short-range transmitters. And they were easily found, weren't they? There was no attempt to conceal them. Obvious, as soon as you removed any covers. Didn't you think to look further? Why would we? It looked convincing enough. We are not investigators, you know. Professor, why is he here? It seems he's cleared of all charges and is helping in the investigation. Uh, isn't that right, Doctor? Precisely. Very well. So, this really is Osiris's crown. Fascinating. So, you are a kindred spirit, Doctor. See there? All the detailed etchings, the appearance matches exactly the descriptions given in the ancient Egyptian texts. Yes, but it's Osiris's mark of kinship, her mantle of power, her legacy. Why would she just abandon it here? There is another element at play here. You can't be serious, Doctor. An Egyptian god left it here? That is pure myth. And your explanation for its presence here is what? This is just an artifact, perhaps a sacrificial one. Used for a ceremony of some kind, and that Homo sapiens originated on Mars, fleeing to Earth when a catastrophe befell the planet. These pyramids are a remain of a lost, highly advanced human civilization. Patrick, that is pure nonsense. As a scientist, you should know better than to create a theory on mere gossip. Was it Professor Hindley who originated that theory, Patrick? The theory is mine, Doctor. Did Hindley support your theory then? No. He vehemently rejected it to the extent that he would not recommend my thesis for submission. Then why stay with him, or work with him for that matter? Because it brought me here. What better place to prove my theory than here at the source? If there's proof, I will find it here. The isotope signatures in the metals of the crown would let us know where it was or wasn't manufactured. That is, if we could touch it. 
Oh, the barrier appears to be the same shattered material found in the antechamber, but so far we've not been able to even scratch its surface. Uh, there must be some way to break it. You'd need Sutek's immense power to penetrate this barrier. But of course, that's why Osiris left her crown behind. Irresistible bait. Bait? Bait for what? For us? No, no, Sutek, of course. But the trap didn't catch Sutek. It caught Professor Hindley instead. The Egyptian god of destruction? Are you insane? I think I prefer Hindley's theory of aliens over this mystic mumbo-jumbo. Ignorance is always a luxury. I don't see any traps. Apart from the crown, there's nothing else in the room. Look very closely. Look at the walls. Don't you see? They're bronze. Polished bronze. All of them. Like a mirror. But what of it? Hathor's mirror. Oh, come on. You think Hindley somehow ended up fighting his own reflection? Then where's his body? Shouldn't it still be here? Not necessarily. The problem with legends is that they change over time. The actual reality of this particular legend is the projection of the spirit, or the ability to project a form or a body from one side of the mirror to the other side, like a vortex tunnel. I was forced to use one myself once, the last time I faced Sutek. Oh, come on, man. Are you saying you have met Sutek the Destroyer? A god, a real god from Egyptian mythology. Ah, oh, preposterous. I am surrounded by madmen. It really does at times sound absurd, doesn't it? But Sutek was real, and dangerous to say the least. Now, let's see. Hmm, there must be something, some sort of mechanism. There always is. Ah, there, you see there. A small, dull patch. You see, the mirror is a portal that triggers the crown, but the actual transfer circuit is right here. And if I press just so, it should... That's on. I thought it would... Ah! Ah! I can't pull away. It's got hold of my arm. A gravity field of some sort. It's a booby trap. All of you, get out! Then Horus and his tricks. Doctor, I... Uh, it's, it's pulling me in. Doctor! Doctor, help me. Adelaide, uh, hold on. Uh, this crystal shard should... Uh, what happened? A booby trap in the treasure room. There was an energy discharge of some sort. The Doctor and Hadaway were caught in it. Hadaway took the better part of the blast, though. He put him out of commission for a while. We're looking after him as best we can, but the medic and I thought you should see this. A superficial examination of the patient showed an irregular heartbeat, so I did an ultrasound. What am I looking at? This is a heart, and this is a second heart. He, he has two hearts? Come on. And that's not all. He also has two circulatory systems. His blood type can't be matched and his DNA does not show normal base pairing sequences. Well, what is he then? Some kind of mutated freak? Genetically engineered? He is, by all accounts, an alien. You're saying he's not human? It would appear so. You don't have to whisper. I already know I'm not human. What happened after I collapsed? You threw something out into the wall and it released us, but Hadaway was injured in the backlash. Right, then. Never underestimate an Osirian. Is that what you are? An Osirian? No, I'm Gallifreyan. The Osirians, or what you would call the Egyptian gods, are just an alien race, really. But they were very powerful, very cunning. They eventually retreated from our universe. No one really knows why. At one point, there was only one race capable of defeating them. Those like Sutek tried, but were stopped. What race? Mine, of course. No one knows where the Osirians come from. Certainly not from here. And I came to Mars to investigate the legacy they left behind. Answer perhaps some unanswered questions. Did you have anything to do with Professor Hindley's disappearance? No, I didn't. The Professor must have fallen for an Osirian trap. One built for one of their own. Curiosity just killed a cat. He is dead then. No, I don't think so. But he is trapped. Hathaway was standing directly behind me as I fell. She was not transported to the other side, but took the beam head on. 
Professor Henley did not have a crystal shard to help him. Can you free him? You seem to make some progress with the wall. It saved us at least. I nearly got us all ensnared in the professor's predicament. That passage is one way. Its purpose is to trap Sutek. Anyone else entering the field will also find themselves trapped indefinitely. So, he is lost then. I know his wife. She will never forgive me for this. It had nothing to do with you. That won't matter, Commander. Maria entrusted me with his safety. I wasn't planning on giving up, so let's not call it quits just yet. I do have some equipment on my ship that may lower the energy field and allow the professor to cross back over. It is a long shot, but it's certainly worth a try. What do you say? I'll send someone to help you bring your equipment. In the meantime, I will set a perimeter around the area so no one else is snared. Professor, come with me. We have much to discuss. What exactly is this thing? It's a field dampener, Professor, and it's quite capable of dampening the electrical impulses in your brain down to nothing. So do be careful. Oh, oh, uh, which way was it facing? The wrong way. All right, all that remains is to connect the power. Uh, Doctor, I think there's a problem. What? Oh, I see. Patrick, Tef, hello. Be quiet, you stinking alien. You're an abomination. I've heard much worse. Stay down, creature. Patrick, what are you doing? The pyramids on Mars were built by humans. You know that's yet to be proved one way or the other. With him here, it will never be proved. I will not stand for this. Put your guns down, please. Professor, please move away from me. Get out of their line of fire. I agree. Get away from that demon. If you kill me, Professor Hindley will have no chance of returning to this world. Hindley has been corrupted. He cannot be saved. Time to die. Hey, death. Professor, your pocket. The pulsar crystal shard. Throw it after I disappear. I'm going to get your friend. That was a rather tight situation. To say the least. You've made it through, though. It's like the stars. Professor Hindley, I presume. It is a pleasure to meet your acquaintance. At your service. And you are? I am the doctor. I've been watching all along, although I couldn't hear anything. What exactly is going on back there? A religious dispute over the existence of non-human life. Fairly simple, but dangerous. So we brought the Zealots down on us. Incredible. At the moment, that's the least of our worries. I have lost some of my dampener rods in the chaos. What were you planning on doing with those? Lower the energy threshold of this portal. It may have allowed us to return. And now? We won't be going back that way. Not anymore. Ah, there, you see. There is the commander and his men. At least that is under control for the moment. Time we get moving. Well, there's a black pyramid over that way. I've walked for one kilometer along each of the four compass points, and as far as I can see, that's the only structure. There's only sand in each direction to the far horizon. Lots and lots of sand. Then I guess the pyramid is our only course of action. I'll enjoy the company. I feel like I've been alone for quite some time. How have you been surviving this wasteland? Did you find any food or a water source? No, but surprisingly, I haven't been thirsty or hungry. I feel just fine. Have you been sleeping? A little. But I don't feel the need for it, and it's never dark here. Curiouser and curiouser. Just red sand, blue sky, and two suns. And a black pyramid. This way, then, Doctor. The pyramid seems to have a single entryway. I have searched all around, several times and have found only this one. I tried to open it, but there is no locking mechanism that I can see. I have dealt with this sort of thing before. It is perhaps a telepath-sensitive lock. The Osirians were quite efficient with it. A sirens? The ones who built this place. All right, here, let me try. (laughs) 
Hmm, that was easy. A bit too easy, if you ask me. After you, Professor. Uh, no, please. Uh, I'm just a humble follower. Right, then. It is cool. But at least it isn't dark. What is the light source? I don't see any... Reflecting pulsar crystals that are placed throughout the pyramid, I believe. Directing sunlight from its apex point. You seem very knowledgeable about all this. Years and years of practice. But like I said, I have dealt with them and their technology before. What is that disc at the center? Not sure what it's called, but I assume it holds power from the crystals exponentially. After centuries of sun energy accumulated, it has enough power to rival a black hole. What would require that much power? The activation of a time portal. But what I don't understand is why the Osirians would give Sutek a means of escape. Why not just trap him here? Sutek? Yes, Sutek. These pyramids on Mars were built solely to trap Sutek. Horus's eye held him unmoving on Earth, while Osiris's crown was the backup plan for when the eye failed. The crown and Hathor's mirror were designed to bring him here when and if he freed himself. You're saying Sutek is alive on Earth? No, not anymore. He was defeated. But this trap was untouched, so it still remained. Defeated by whom? By me. You? It's a long story. For another time, perhaps. The only thing we need to worry about now is how to get out of here. Well, I guess I'm in good hands. I think. <laughs> yeah, let's hope so. So why a door on a pyramid? If it's a trap, then... I expect it's a choice of sorts. Stay here, or surrender yourself. Surrender to whom? To the only ones that could control Sutek. His Osirian rivals. His people. You're saying this leads to an alien race? Perhaps their very own planet? Quite possibly, yes. Hmm, I also believe that it's our only way out of here. Out of the frying pan and into the fire. After you, Doctor. After you. Look, we'll be fine. Just stay with me, and don't wander off. Wouldn't dream of it. I'll go in first. Now, slowly, step into the disc. We should be... Uh, Doctor? Are you there? Doctor, I'm in complete darkness. Steady, my friend. I'm here. Now listen. What in the blazes is that? Like it's suspended in the midair. Hathor, I think, judging by the horns and ears. Is it real? No, I think it's just a projection of one. But perhaps it may need to be activated first. Hathor, the cow god, has created the souls of the dead in the underworld. In the Egyptian books of the underworld, the dead needed to know the secret names of the deities in order to gain passage. Very good, Professor. Of course, their secret names, or their Osirian names, they must be one and the same. Now, what was it? Ah, Ka, Athir, Ain. I was told to expect Sutek. You are not he. Um, look. You see, we were brought here by mistake. Can you perhaps send us back to the pyramids on Mars? I wouldn't want to take up any more of your precious time. So, we don't want to be here any longer than we have to. I can return you to the Black Pyramid or send you forward. That is the limit of my power and the limit of your choice. Ah, I see. All right. But my friend here must accompany me. I will not abandon him here. He must go as well. Yes, but it is your journey, and the trials of the forward path are not intended for your kind. And if I fail, what happens to my companion? It depends on where you fail. If early, the other will be returned to the Black Pyramid. If later, he will share your fate. Doctor, what happens in these trials? These are the trials alluded to in the Egyptian books of the Underworld. The weighing of the soul? Yes, judgment and atonement. This path was intended to bring Sutek back into the fold. Exactly how dangerous is it? Very dangerous, I presume. A trial designed to chastise Sutek can surely kill a lesser being. Then we shouldn't do it. 
Look, Professor, the alternative is to spend the rest of eternity back in that wasteland, and I certainly don't fancy doing that. Now, if there's even a small chance of success, I'll surely take it. But at least we will be alive. Perhaps we could find another way out. There is no way out of there. I know it. An eternity on that sand plane would drive you mad. We are now in this together, whether we like it or not. I see. Very well, Doctor. But you must choose, not me. Hathor, we choose to go forward then. We are somewhere else. It feels different. Another figure is suspended. Fascinating. A long, elongated head. Let's see. That must be Thoth. I believe you're right, Doctor. Thoth, the Egyptian moon god. Also the god of writing and knowledge. Looks like he's holding some sort of ball. I'm about to activate the image, Professor. You may want to step back a little. Now, let's see. If I remember correctly, it is Thoranam. You are not Sudek. No, but unfortunately, we have to take this path in order to return to our own time and place. Who makes this journey? I am called the Doctor, and this is Professor Hindley. Doctor, do you accept this trial? Yes. The orb glows bright. It is the unblemished light of the soul. Take it, Doctor. Doctor, I don't think you should touch that. It is our only course of action. I have no choice. The light of the orb flickers and fades. You have a heavy heart, Doctor. So it would appear. You cannot conceal the truth from Osiris. No one can. Not even a Time Lord. Osiris? Here? Oh my god! What the devil was that? Doctor, answer me. Are you all right? I'm fine. I'm fine. Now, where did he go? Where is Thoth? It seems we have another visitor. Another one? Only Sutek was expected by this path. Now uh, look here. It's uh, very simple, really. The natives of Earth are a curious species. One crossed over using the path intended for Sutek. And I... I followed here to help him. Then, you are not of the Earth. No, but I certainly do call it home from time to time. But you are the one who chose this path? Yes, I had to. I could not leave the Professor to die in that eternal wasteland. It wasn't his fault. That trap was not meant for him. He does not deserve it. You hold the orb. To end your journey, you must present yourself before Osiris. Release it, and be judged. Pillars. We can't even see the top. And there, undoubtedly, is the throne. Is that Osiris? This is the Doctor. He came via Sutek's destined path. Here is the Orb, Mistress. The power that holds Sutek immobile would have prevented such passage by another. Unfortunately, Horus's power was destroyed. The Orb glows blue. Truth. If Horus's eye was destroyed, then Sutek would be freed. That is correct. And he was freed. You speak truth, Doctor. But your soul is tainted, shattered by sin. It may well be. But I do not believe that your race, who removed themselves from the concerns of the cosmos, have the right to judge my actions. You are right, Doctor, so I will not judge you on those matters. The orb regains its brilliance. Except for this one band of grey upon its surface. Please explain. I have committed no act that would concern your race. Have you not? By your own admission, Sutek is free, and yet here you are standing before me in his stead. Why is that? Basically, Sutek stepped into a space-time corridor, 
It was my doing. He had to be stopped, so I trapped him inside. Truth. Is he dead, then? Possibly. He was very powerful, so I am not completely sure. Did he miscalculate against you? He was desperate and made some mistakes. He underestimated the threat that I posed to him. How did your actions cause Sutek to be trapped in the space-time tunnel? I simply shifted the timing of the destination very far into the future. Farther than he could, uh, exist. You knowingly chose a time beyond Sutek's lifespan? Yes, I did. So you murdered him? Perhaps, but I had no choice. It was either that, or see him wipe out all life in my universe. And that, I cannot allow. You allow? <laughs> Don't you understand? He left me no choice. You're wrong. Sutek's hatred of Horus would have driven him to Mars in search of his nephew's whereabouts. That path would ultimately have led him here to repent and be reunited with his people. But I witnessed the future he would bring. I traveled forward and I saw the Earth destroyed. It was a burning hell. And that cannot be. You speak truth. But there are two truths here, Doctor. Osirians can change the future. It is why we chose to remove our influence and ourselves from the cosmos. What you saw was just one possibility from a myriad of alternate futures. And it was your own emotions, your own fears that determined the future you witnessed. In effect, you chose that future. The probability that Sutek would choose it was very low. So the second truth is now revealed. It may be so, but I could not take that chance. Not even remotely. And yes, I am guilty of killing Sutek, and I have taken him from you, and therefore I accept your judgment on this matter. But I have one last request. Please let the professor go back. He's not at fault here, and means no one any harm. Hey, wait a minute! The doctor couldn't have known about the second truth. For him, there was only one truth, that Sutek would destroy the Earth. Very well put. You certainly are a worthy companion for the doctor to have at his side. And that is why he will not be judged for his actions. We do not punish ignorance. I am sorry, Osiris. I know I have taken him from you. If there was any other way... Sutek's body is not beyond recovery, Doctor. And he can be revived as I once was. The procedure is somewhat debasing, and my brother will not appreciate his body being handled in such a manner. I find it rather fitting that he will endure what he once subjected me to. Mummification? Your journey is ended, Doctor. You will be returned to the original point of insertion, and upon recovery of my brother's body, the pathway that brought you here will be deactivated. Very well done, both of you. So, the Osirians will be lost to us once again. Your race has come to understand the nature of time, Doctor. And when you truly comprehend space, then we shall meet again. Space? What do you mean by space? Darkness again. Are we back inside the Black Pyramid? No, I don't think so. Look at the floor. Sand. Thank goodness. For a moment there, I thought we were goners. There must be a latch somewhere. Here. We must be inside another chamber room. This passage does look familiar. I believe this way leads to the crown room. I'm sorry to say, but this is where we part ways, Professor. Well, all right. I just thought perhaps... It's just better this way. Too many questions. And I've just had my fill of them. Don't you agree? Yes. Yes. Of course. Thank you, Doctor. You have saved my life. I could never repay you. Live. That is payment enough. Now, be well, my friend, and may your gods be with you. You have been listening to Doctor Who Legacy, the ATEF Crown, starring Julian Bay. This has been an Empire Audio production, adapted from a story by Leslie Force. These are the continuing adventures of the Doctor from Doctor Who Alternate Empire. Featured in the cast were Julian Bain as the Doctor, Linwood Riley as Captain Cohen, Peter Walsh as Patrick, Gareth Boley as Professor Wainwright, 
John Hutch as Professor Hindley, Elise Crowick as Hathaway, Alex Matthews as Sergeant Miller, Michael Wallace as Tef, Gwendolyn Jensen Woodard as the medic, James Haney as the tech, Mindy Rast Keenan as Osiris, Victor Aurelius as Anubis, Mark Kalita as Thought. Credits by Thomas Barnes. Cover art by Rick Ridgway. Editing and post-production by Eric Busby and Julian Bain.